that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of judgment, you will reach a position of misery. People will be miserable. People will, some of them will be saddened. People would have given up hope in some ways. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the long hadith. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people will gather each other and they will begin to question what's going to happen to us. And so they will remember the prophets. Let's go to the prophets. Let's ask them. Let's come to them and ask them to intercede for us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can begin the judgment, the hisab, the accountability. He said, in this life I had a dua. And this dua, I kept it. Whereas every other prophet was given their dua which they asked for. As for my dua which I kept specific for me, was that, Oh Allah, save my ummah on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Behold, your Lord may raise you a beautiful raising on the day of judgment. What is that? It is the raising of the intercession. And this is the way it will go. He said, the people will go to Adam alayhi salam. And they will say to him, Ya Adam, Anta Abu al-Bashar. You are the father of all mankind. You are our father. Allah created you with his hands. Please intercede for us on this day. And then Adam alayhi salam will say, Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me. Please go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I disobeyed my Lord once. Today my Lord is in a state of anger, which he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one who is after me. So we go to Nuh alayhi salam. And we say, Ya Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. You are the second father of mankind. <coughs> Intercede for us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. And then Nuh alayhi salam will say the same thing. Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me, go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I made my dua upon my people. My Lord is angry in a state where he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one after me, go to the one after me. So then we go to the next prophets, till we reach Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam on that day would also respond in the same way. And he will say, Ilaykum anni, Ilaykum anni. Please turn away from me, turn away from me. My Lord is in a state of anger which has never been angry like this before. Go, I am not qualified for it. Lestu laha. Go to the one after me. We keep going from prophet to prophet. This is all the Muslims and all the disbelievers, everyone. So then we go finally to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam responds in the same way. He said, then we go to Isa alayhi salam. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, responds in the same way. And he adds, the people took me as a God. Therefore, today I am not qualified to face my Lord. How am I supposed to face him? I've got to an answer to this. I've got something I have to answer to. The people took me as a God. Go to the one after me. I am not qualified for it. Lestu laha. Finally, we reached Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, this is what I have been favored with on that day. That I will be given an intercession for you people. And the only intercession I'll be given for is for my ummah, for only for my nation who followed me. As for the rest of the nations, they will have to go behind their prophets, behind their imams. And everyone else who was disbeliever will go behind whoever they used to follow. So whoever their authority was, the angels will say, go to whoever you used to follow. Al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when the people come to me and they say, please, ishfa' lana, intercede for us for the judgment to begin, I will call out on that day and say, Ana laha, ana laha. I am the one qualified for this. I am the one qualified for this today. 
and at that moment, the greatness of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will appear. The greatness of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah had bestowed in him will appear. The status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your Prophet. While everyone is resorting to prophets and messengers, asking them to ask Allah to make things easy on them, and every prophet and messenger says, Myself, myself, now they'll go to the Prophet and the Prophet will say, Yes, and the Prophet will go under the throne of Allah and prostrate to Allah. I, I, I prostrate to my Lord such a prostration, so prolonged. Only Allah knows how long, Masha Allah and Asjud, as long as Allah wills for me to make sujood. And I call out to Allah in such a dua that I've never called out before in my life. I've never used these words in praising Him and calling out to Him in my sujood. And then my Ummah who followed me in my sunnah and never violated my sunnah, and never innovated my sunnah in my sunnah, never changed tried their best to follow me sincerely, they will prostrate behind me. A caller will call out, prostrate down to your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, a saq will be revealed. What is this saq? What is the true nature of this saq? Allah only knows. The book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, my Lord reveals his saq. Only Allah knows the nature of this saq. There is nothing like unto him, and he hears all things and sees all things. So we will not dwell into the description of this reality called as saq. The Muslims, the believers will see it, and then they will be called to prostrate. So then, bi'ithnillah, we prostrate. Except for the hypocrites. Allah says, فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ They will not be able to prostrate. And the disbelievers will not be able to prostrate. And a caller will say, Go to whomever you used to follow. And so they go looking for their lords or their authority. And they are forced to stand behind their authorities. Allah says in the Quran, Every people will be called with their leaders. So whoever you used to follow today as your leader, Whoever's words were on top of the words of Allah or the words of the Prophet Muhammad that will be your leader on that day and you'll be gathered behind them. As for the Prophet Muhammad and his Ummah who are still prostrating, the hadith says, في ذلك اليوم ينزل الله. On that day, Allah will descend. How will He descend? What does descending mean? Only Allah knows the nature of this descension. But in our aqeedah, in our belief system, we are taught in the Quran and Sunnah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend. The nature of that, we don't know. And Allah says in the Quran, on that day, your Lord and his angels will come. The angels in line like soldiers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. As for Allah's coming, we don't know how this nature is. In Surah Al-Haqqa, Allah says, and Allah's throne will be brought. What does this throne look like? Only Allah knows. But it will be brought and there will be eight angels carrying Allah's throne. These angels, the description came in the hadith that they are so humongous that it will take 300 years journey for a person to reach between the shoulder and the earlobe. They look in that nature. What the earlobe looks like, Allah knows. What the shoulder looks like, Allah knows. But the point is these angels are humongous. Eight of them carrying Allah's throne. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, while I'm under the throne of Allah, prostrating to Allah, supplicating to Allah, were they supplicated that I've ever supplicated to Him before? Allah will call me from above the throne. Allah will say, Oh Muhammad, irfa' rasak. Wasal, ta'ta. Washfa' to shafa. Oh Muhammad, put your head on. Ask, we'll give you. Intercede, we will accept your intercession. Allahu Akbar, what an honor. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will put his head up. Will put his head up from, from prostration, from sujood. And he'll ask Allah. You think what does the Prophet sallallahu will ask Allah for? Every other Prophet is asking Allah to save him. But that moment, 
And Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, while every single prophet and messenger here and being is concerned about himself, and Nabi alayhi salatu was salam will put his head up, stand under the throne of Allah, and he says, Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, my nation, Ummati. My nation, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, have mercy upon my nation. Ya Allah, forgive my nation. Ya Allah, make it easy on my nation. Who's the nation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who's the nation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Me and you. While every other Prophet messenger is concerned about himself, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is concerned about me and you. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is worried about me and you. Ya Arab, my nation. My nation! Oh Allah, make it easy on my nation. Oh Allah, forgive these people. Oh Allah, have mercy upon them. Oh Allah, don't punish them. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say to Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, we will take out of the hellfire anyone from your nation that had Iman equal to the weight of a seed of wheat. Allah Anyone from the nation of the Prophet who had a weight of Iman to the seed of wheat. My Nabi Sallallahu prostrates again to Allah. He wants more. Yeah, Allah, that's not enough for me. And Allah has given him a lot. He prostrates to Allah again, supplicates to Allah again. So Allah Azza wa Jalla again will come from above the throne again, saying to him, Oh Muhammad, put your head up, ask you to be given intercession to accept your intercession. So the Prophet the second time will put his head up, stand under the throne of Allah, says, Ya Rabb, my nation, my nation, I want more for my nation. I want more for my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Oh Muhammad, we will take out of the whole fire from your nation anyone who had Iman equal to the weight of an atom. But is that enough for the Prophet? He's still worried about me and you. So worried about me and you when Allah was not even care about him. He's so worried about me and you. He's so worried about this person who's committing the haram. <coughs> He's so worried about this person who doesn't even pray. He's so worried about this person who commits evilness in a moment that these people don't even care about. And the third time in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will prostrate under the throne of Allah, supplicating to Allah, Ya Rabb, I want more, I want more, I want more. It's not enough. It's not enough that you take out of the hellfire anyone from my nation that had an iman equal to an atom or equal to a seed of wheat. I want more. No, Ya Rabb, for my nation. So Allah calls the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the third time and final time. Oh Muhammad, put your head up. Ask you to be given intercede or accept your intercession. So the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam will continue calling upon Allah and say, Ya Rabb, my nation, my nation. Ummati, Ummati, my nation, Ya Allah, my nation, Ya Allah. So Allah Azza wa Jal will say to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, we will take out of the hellfire from your nation anyone that ever said La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is for who? For Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is for who? For Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me see. Let me see those thugs and gangsters that some of our Muslim youth follow. Let me see what they're going to do for you in the hereafter. Let me see what they're going to do for you. <coughs> Let us see those that we look up to and we act like and we look like and we speak like what they're going to do for you in the hereafter. Because that's what Muhammad will do for you in the hereafter. My brothers in Islam, the day of judgment is not a joke. The day of judgment is not a fiction story. The day of judgment it's not something that was made up. The day of judgment is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about in the Quran, Maliki Yawmiddi. Allah is the owner of the day of reckoning. It is that day that we're all going to be there. And we're all going to stand before Allah Azza wa Jalla. 